Hello, today I'm going to talk about Cessify, which is a project from MetaMask. Cessify is a Browserify plugin for helping you build a secure app bundles. Uh, it specifically aims to prevent attacks from uh, third-party code in your dependency graph. Um, so to take a look at that today, uh, we'll look at this Cessify example under my GitHub. And let's see, I have it right here. Um, so let's go ahead and get started uh, by just running npm start. Uh, we are uh, creating our Browserify build. Uh, Budo here is a tool for reloading Browserify when source files change, uh, so I'm just using that. Uh, we're starting at index.js, um, and then I've specified this plugin, specify, and I'm giving it a config variable, which is uh, this is config file. We'll take a look at that later. Um, so let's see, what do we have here? This page has not been compromised, so that's good. Uh, and then the friend has also updated the DOM. We'll see what that means. Um, so let's see what would have happened if we had just run this in vanilla Browserify. Okay, so we're still using Budo, uh, but this time we did not specify the, the Cessify plugin. Okay, and if we run it, oh no, this page has been hacked by foe. Okay, well, that's not good. Let's take a look at what happened there. Um, so here, you know, we have an index.js file, and that takes a bundle file. Uh, with Browserify, you specify an entry point. Here's our entry point here. Uh, we're bringing in some dependencies in the you know, Node.js, call them JS style, and then we're using them in our in our code. Um, and so the uh, sort of the situation of this example is that both of these modules, foe and friend, were useful modules that we we were using at the start of our development, and sometimes in sometime during the course of our our development or maintenance of this app, one of those dependencies uh, went rogue, and we don't want the now evil code somehow getting into our app and causing problems. And uh, so, oh yes, uh, for the sake of this example, uh, I've using this Browserify feature uh, in the package JSON. You can specify replacements for for modules in your dependency graph. So I've replaced friend and foe with uh, two files here inside of source. Uh, otherwise, they behave like normal third-party dependencies, but now I don't have to like publish them and that sort of thing. So makes operating this, this demo easy. Uh, so let's take a look at these two uh, modules. One is friend. Um, in terms of platform APIs, it's using console.log, and it's using document body. And here, it's, you know, this is sort of very sloppy, but we're just uh, appending something onto the DOM here in a very sloppy way. Um, friend happily updated the DOM. We saw that earlier. And what uh, the foe is doing, um, the foe is also exporting this, this function, and it's saying uh, it's also trying to use document, trying to use console log. Um, and then our index is, uh, we're, in, we're instantiating those two modules, and then we are you know, calling their action. They happen to, to export on them. Okay. So when in a normal Browserify bundle, you shouldn't be surprised to find that foe is able to um, do, you know, modify the DOM uh, because it's that's what it's doing. So we didn't expect it to do that, and now it has, you know, marked the page as hacked. Maybe it did something else. It pulled some important information on a local host, or it redirected the web page to somewhere else, or who knows what kind of attack it did. But it was able to do that because uh, it could just do whatever it wanted to. Let's take a moment to look a little closer at the attack here. Uh, so as I mentioned before, it's modifying the document body, but when, when can it do that? Um, so in our entry point here, uh, let's say we don't, we don't call these actions at all. Um, and then we see um, that it's fine, but the, the attack could have happened really at, at in module initialization time. So it could have done it then. Then we got we got hit by it. Okay, well let's say it's kind enough to to not do that. Well, it can also um, replace the. It can modify other modules. Um, so here we have the friend. We've changed its action object. So let's say we don't run the foe's action, but we just ran the friend's action. Um, we're still screwed because the foe in its initialization was able to overwrite friend because there's only one uh, instantiation of each module. Um, and and 
And yeah, so we're, we're able to get hit in three different places. One at runtime, one via modifying other things, and, and two just when we call it directly and have it do something. Um, and so that puts us in a bit of a pickle. Um, now, again, this was uh, not an issue when we ran it with Cessify. And um, let's examine why, because it's still running, but we can see in the console that it has, that foe has failed to modify DOM, so it at least it was kind enough to let it know that the hack didn't work. Yes, it failed to modify the DOM. Um, and the reason for that is, uh, when you look at here, we, you know, when we run specify, we're, we're specifying this config, specify config, and let's take a look at that. So here we're returning this object, and this object has, is obviously a config object, and what we're specifying is, the endowments, the platform APIs that we give to this module, that we expose to this module. And this, obviously this is a super simple one, but in this case, uh, we're giving the friend the document object and we're giving the phone nothing. Uh, the dollar sign here is just uh, to suggest the endowments here. You can put some other config at this level. Um, maybe I could re should replace this with endowments, but uh, in the meantime, I'm just using the shorthand. Now, of course, Cessify is not a magic bullet. If um, you know if your configuration is bad, or the attacker is able to, uh, you know, uh, happens to get a, a module in your dependency graph that is. Oh, sorry, I need to restart it after I change the configuration. Um, if a module is uh, basically already given certain things and then it's able to use those attacks. Well, that's going to be a problem. So here we, we gave the foe the document access, and then they were able to use it to perform their attack. Um, so you do need to make sure that your configuration is good. Um, now let's look a little bit more at what the... So in summary, we were able to prevent the, so let me restart it after I change the config. Uh, so in summary, uh, we were able to prevent the attacker uh, from modifying the DOM because we did not give it that, we did not give it the document API object. Thanks.